This demonstration shows how easy it is to take your 2D application built in FireMonkey and bring it into a 3D environment. We are going to start a new FireMonkey 3D application. To start we have this uh, nice 3D space where we can create T rectangle 3Ds. Move around left and right, we've got our angles here. And we can set our pitch like that and then we can go like that and then we can readjust the size like this. It's pretty cool. Like so. Very flexible. Just so you know you can hold control and then you can move your mouse up and down to set your Z position. Alright so that's pretty basic manipulation of 3D object. However this will cover taking a 2D form and putting it into a 3D space which usually consists of flat rectangles. In 3D, we will cover a component called T-Layer 3D. And what this is, is a component that contains a 2D form. So it looks just like a rectangle. you got all of your uh, handles here. But uh, you can take this Layer 3D, and then you can add a button to it. And then it will appear inside that layer, which is really cool. And then I can actually copy this and paste it and I have two of them so I have one closer one further type of thing I can have it angled like that just like so now you can create forms in 3d space but it isn't exactly intuitive you know because you have to bring it close and you have to make sure everything's all aligned properly and it's it's just it's just not intuitive. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our form that we built in the 2D application and we're going to bring it into here. So we're going to create another T layer 3D. All right. So here we go. And now we will add our other form to this project. So we'll add both of them, just like so. All right, so here's our old message form, and then we have the other message list form. What we do is first we have to add the forms, of course, to the uses clause of this uh, unit. So we've got form, twitcher, message, and we've got form, twitcher, message, list. Save, or to, to autocomplete, and then it should times, but I'm sure we will just press this once. So when I press this button, it instantly shows up in T layer 3D at the top left. Now that's easy, but it, it, it's still pretty manual, and I gotta manually position it, I gotta make sure everything's perfect, and it, it's just not clean. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it into a concave user interface. I have developed a method that takes in several parameters. I'm just getting that now. And what it does is that it takes in the item ID, which is if you were to have an array of uh, layer 3Ds, you'd specify which one you're talking about. The item ID, the, the length, uh, the width of the scene, the number of columns that you want to have per row, the position of uh, the layer 3D, the X, Y, and the Z, and the width, the height, and the Y rotation of the uh, layer 3D. So just to uh, illustrate this, we're going to have our two panels here. One's over here, one's down there. And we're going to call set 3D grid position when I press this button here. So we're going to call 3D set position. We're going to pass in the item, item ID, zero, scene width, self dot width. A number of columns, we will have two columns item position. Now here we pass in the layer 3D's position. It takes in the T position 3D and we pass in item width, item height, and item Y rotation by reference. So um, I'm, I'm going to have to declare these. I'm just simply going to pass them in. Make sure that compiles. Everything's good. All right, then afterwards I'm going to set the parent.width equals item width dot height equals item height and dot rotation angle dot y which is the uh, left and right rotation 
equals item line rotation. So we're just going to set one of them, and it would then be on the right side. There we go. So now we have a nice interface. Now I could, I could maybe refactor this so that I can even create these layers on the fly, and then you know have our different forms. Put it in here. You know, I I could have multiple. It, it, it's quite amazing. So I could you know, take this, copy it again, right? Copy it again, copy it again. So now I've got one, two, three, four. I got four panels now, and I can probably create a new procedure that uh, takes in dot set panel position that takes in the layer 3D and takes in the item index. So instead of recopying the code and duplicating my code, I am simply creating a simple method that takes care of that for me. So all I have to do is call the set panel position. So instead of uh, panel button position, I'll just set this, set this, and then set that. And instead of hard coding the position or the index, I'll be passing an item index. So I can call this. Now I have it four times. PNL button, which is of index zero. PNL parent, which we will now make index of one. Layer 3D one, index of two. And that is an index of three. All right, I press the button and presto. So notice how when I move this to the right, it kind of doesn't go with it. So simple enough. On the resize, I will simply uh, recall that uh, methods. So I'm actually going to uh, create a new function called set positions, which simply calls that. So if we were to start the application and press the button, it will you know, set the angles and the positioning correctly. However, if I were to resize, it automatically sets the angle and the position and the height correctly. I uh, plan to release that code for uh, people to uh, download and check out. So uh, take a look at, um, at uh, learndelphi.com for more information. Right now we are setting the rotation angle uh, of the result from the set 3D grid position function and we're assigning it to Y. To change it to a animation, you simply comment out the old and then you go animate float. Then we take our property, we pass it in as a string, rotation angle dot Y. If you're dealing with sub properties, you must include the full path, starting with the components. So if we're going panel dot rotation angle dot y or position dot x <clears throat> or scale dot y and x, you have to put the full path in there. Dot y. We'll set the new value to our item y rotation, and we'll leave the rest of the parameters as is. And we'll maybe increase the duration just a little bit. We'll put it to two seconds just to make this more noticeable. So I'm just going to push the button here and it animates wonderfully. Do it again. <laughs>